Yan and Jazeera. Well, let's take this on. We can speak to James Denslow. He's an associate fellow at the Foreign Policy Centre and director of the new uh, diplomacy platform. Mr. Denslow, welcome to the programme. Uh, we've been talking about the regional context of this conflict ever since the very beginning, but it's really, really coming to play now, isn't it? Yes, um, the former UN representative to Syria, Kofi Annan, warned that Syria wouldn't implode, it would explode. Now we see the most uh, highest levels of violence in Iraq since 2008. We've got uh, problems on the Turkish border. The Jordanians are shutting theirs and sending American military uh, to the place. We've got now the Israeli border in play. And, of course, uh, Lebanon, a country that was predicted to be pulled into the Syrian chaos right at the beginning, uh, far more involved in this. And I think the, the Hezbollah involvement, as your correspondent said, are key to this scenario. It is uh, a paradox somewhat. You have a, a resistance force fighting a revolutionary resist resistance force now in Syria. And I think that there was no coincidence that following the loss of Qusayr, you had the Free Syrian Army make sudden surprise gains on the Golan. Uh, the Israelis, of course, have been involved in a limited degree so far, but that could change and we could see uh, a much worse situation develop across the region. Right. Uh, do you think that could be a, a tactical maneuver by the rebels to try and draw Israel in? Well, I think it's a, a narrative change. If you just lose a city, you need to make sure you seem to be on the front foot. And 24-hour media is always looking for tipping points and decisive battles. I think there is uh, an even greater paradox to what Hezbollah could find itself doing. Uh, the Syrian regime has no interest in fighting uh, Israel at this time. And considering its lack of competency when dealing with its uh, rebellion or this revolution, you could find Hezbollah, a group that essentially was formed to fight Israel, defending Israeli borders against uh, rebel troops, as our rebel forces as they now see to, to attack in these areas. So it's a, it's a very fluid situation, but certainly uh, the regime will be very wary that Israel has already proven its willingness to take matters into its own hands if it sees its security threatened. And I think we have to watch that border very closely. How important do you think the uh, taking of Qusair is in the scheme of things? Well, it's one thing to take the city, it's another thing to hold it. Uh, holding it, of course, will mean a problem for the rebels when it comes to certain supply lines. Uh, yet, if you listen to the correspondents who reported from the city today, uh, virtually every single building there was damaged to some extent. Uh, was, it, was it a rout, or did the uh, rebel forces decide to withdraw in the face of an overwhelming opponent? Uh, I, I think we don't know the answer to that yet, but we do know with reports of Hezbollah moving towards Aleppo uh, that the balance of power in what was seen as a stalemate across the country could suddenly come into question quite quickly. And that will, of course, affect the discussions being had in Western capitals as to how to respond to this, and of course the critical question whether or not to arm the Free Syria Army. And, and what about Israel itself as it looks across its border and sees uh, the smoke of the conflict rising to the skies uh, and perhaps even drifting over its, its own territory? Well, Israel's in an unusual position in that both sides hold a hostile position towards it, but it's shown its willingness to use airstrikes to attack weapons being transferred across into Lebanon. It has moved Iron Dome anti-missile systems up to the northern border, distributed gas masks, gas masks to its own population. Um, Israel is involved in this, whether it likes it or not. I don't think it would like either side to win, if you could use the Kissinger phrase. Uh, but as this moment, I think they'd rather have the stability of the known enemy rather than the instability of the enemy like al-Nusra that they don't simply know. That's a pretty comprehensive overview. Uh, James Denslow, we appreciate that. Thanks very much indeed.